In this tutorial, I explain my calculate. The tutorial is split into two parts. In this part, I explain the main features. In the next part, I show how to extract the statistics from the game into the calculator using the UX enhancer. So in this tutorial, I want to start with why one would need such a calculator. The reason is, if you build really large cities, then you need an overview in advance how many populations you have, how many factories of each kind you need. And this calculator gives you the opportunity to calculate all of this. Now what are the basic functions of this calculator? First of all you can set dark mode here with this button. You also have a very large settings menu I will explain later on. For the beginning you may have a look at these settings down here. So you can show the buildings with decimals, you can hide the production and you can hide the boost. So you here you get the most simple view of this calculator but we leave it to the default at the moment. Then, if you have any questions, just open the help and read some background information how the calculator works. In the download section, you can export and import your current configuration and download an application to extract the statistics. So that's for the second part of this tutorial. We now assume that we build 5,000 engineers and it shows us all the buildings we require up to the farm fields and the mines. Based on the demands of the population, the demands for intermediate products and end products are calculated. So you have all of them um, immediately shown. What you can immediately do is increase the productivity of factories. So once you've got energy, you can double the amount that's getting produced. And if you have got more items, you can further increase it. But keep in mind, also, even when you later on equip items, these do not increase the amount of productivity displayed here. You always have to calculate this manually and enter it. If you want to keep track of what you require of buildings and what you already have in your game, there is an option to highlight missing buildings. And this adds a counter for the buildings you already have. You can then count upwards. It also um, offers you an overview over this factory where you can also adjust the number of existing buildings and see the overproduction once you have specified some buildings. Another possibility to boost production is using silos, tractor barns or palace effects. You can simply adjust them by clicking these icons and you can see how the number of buildings reduces. In case of silos and tractor barns, the demand is also incorporated. So the tractor barns require oil and silos require grain, for example. If your population now grows, and let's say you have a very high amount of investors, if you do not want to produce all these goods, you can check production reduction, shown here. And if you scroll down, you have input fields to reduce the consumed amount. If you click here, you can select newspaper articles, for example, and apply it, or in other pages, you can find other effects that you can also apply. If you do not want to apply this to every need individually, you have a button here that shows all effects for this island where you can select and deselect them and apply them for all needs, as done here. Now there are items to change the input of a factory or produce extra demands or goods. You can show these by checking the extra good settings. This will display to more information on each child. So in the upper part, you see extra demand that's added to the demand required on this island. And the, below that's the sum of these two values. Now we can, for example, equip coffee roaster with marker. And if we go to coffee beans, we see that we have an extra amount. We can apply this extra amount and we see the effect down here. Another possibility is our items that change the input to a factory, we can equip them and we now see that our father paintings no longer consumes steel. We see an overview over all the items that have effects here or that have extra goods here. So that's the second way compared to equipping the items in this factory dialog. Until now, we had all buildings and population in one view, but we can also create additional islands if we click here and here. We start with the good old gold fort in the old world, and we also add Cap Trelawney 
um, the island Crown Falls and in the new world we add an, one island called Colony to have some islands to exchange goods between them. It displays our top two population tiers including their amount and the top five factories so that you can quickly see what is the main produ product production on each of these islands. We now click here, we can navigate to the island, enter the amount of investors we want to sell here and we can now see that we can only build those factories that we can build in this region while gold and pearls are not supported to build here. How do we get these goods now? We can create routes, therefore we have to check the option for trade routes and then go to the factory for which we want to import a good, for example chocolate. So here we choose our colony, it automatically inserts the 10 we need here and we then add this. We can also import um, goods from traders, the amount is automatically specified depending on how much they sell. Then we can click the apply button and we see that our destination island does not produce enough. So we go there and so now go there, adjust the productivity and construct enough farms to fulfill the desire. There's one thing you have to be careful about and this is when one product can be produced by several products, like for example for lumberjacks down here. If we then create a trade route, this trade route is attached to this factory. So if we start the trade route from our old world lumberjacks hut and want to import it from the new world, then we get a problem because we can't construct this building there. To fix this, we can say that we want to produce the wood by the new world lumberjacks hut and then we can easily import it from our new world island. So that we do not all this need to click the apply button, we can check this option which does this automatically. Now what we can also do is go to the new world and say how much we already produce there. So we assume that we produce very, a lot of coffee there and then we export this to ground falls. So now when we specify that we have investors, we already see the import applied. And this is changed when we have more investors, only if we have too many investors, if it's, that's no longer sufficient, it will display as not being sufficient. And we now have the possibility to import the difference from our colony.